of course, the headline of this past week is the ICJ ruling on Israel's acts of genocide in Gaza. Let's pull up this story from Al Jazeera. It's a major ruling, basically the court saying Israel has to take action to prevent acts of genocide and provide humanitarian aid to Palestinians. It did not call for an immediate ceasefire, unfortunately. They did not rule either whether genocide has occurred. That's going to take months, if not years, to determine. The ruling called for a bunch of provisional measures, including that Israel must prevent its troops from committing genocidal acts. It also must prevent incitement to commit genocide. Israel also needs to allow for more humanitarian aid to get into Gaza. Uh, Israel also needs to take effective measures to ensure the preservation of evidence related to allegations under the Genocide Convention. And then finally, Israel must report back in a month on these steps. South Africa, who brought the charges against Israel, called the decision a decisive victory. Meanwhile, Israel slammed the ruling. As you can imagine, lots of opinions from the Muslim community. Really, uh, it was all over my social feeds and uh, the stuff that I read. The general consensus from what I saw is that people welcomed the decision and just wish that it went further. In my opinion, uh, you know, anything to stop the violence uh, and bring aid must be done and must be done as soon as possible. And I think the other big question is, where is the U.S. leadership in all of this and why have they uh, how, have they not uh, uh, talked more about stopping uh, the violence and bringing more aid into Gaza? Meanwhile, up in Canada, lots of controversy on the ruling and the govern government's reaction to it. Let's pull up this from CTV News. Basically, the Canadian government doesn't agree with the charges of genocide raised against Israel, and they have no intention of holding Israel to decisions that would force an end to the war or the occupation. And as you can imagine, Muslim leaders weren't having any of it. Listen to the National Council of Canadian Muslims say, you know, that Trudeau and the government are unwilling to take any concrete action to stop the conflict. Right now, there's over 200 Muslim leaders from across the country, from Halifax to Vancouver, that have come to the Hill to talk about the issues that we're facing. Right now, we have seen the largest spike in Islamophobia in since we've been taking data on it. And what we've seen is that the situation overseas has a direct impact on the lives of people here. And we've met multiple times with the prime minister and his office, and we've explained these realities. And for many people in our community, what we saw with the government's position on the International Criminal Court of Justice and what seems like an unwillingness to take concrete action to stop this conflict that is not only killing an enormous amount of people overseas, but really negatively impacting our lives here in Canada. There's nothing new that we could say. We've said it all before. So the question is, when do you, when do you, when does it go, when does it go from a conversation where you're trying to find mutually beneficial or, or a, a road forward where you can actually bring concrete results to real tangible problems that all of us in our communities and our families are facing? When do we just, at what point in time do you realize that you're just no longer being listened to? The reaction here in the States isn't that much different, and it's causing a big headache for President Biden, stuff we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. Uh, but this week, this past week, let's pull this up. Muslim and Arab American leaders in Michigan canceled a meeting with Biden officials last week because of his stance on the war. Basically, Biden's campaign was supposed to meet with 15 or so Arab and Muslim leaders last week to discuss their growing discontent, but that meeting was canceled. Uh, Abid Ayub, the national executive director of the Arab American Anti-Discrimination Committee, said, and I quote here, why does this administration still believe that we're just going to be willing to meet with them with no movement on their part uh, on our demands? And they've been the same demands since August and nothing has changed, end quote. Take a listen to what uh, Dearborn, Michigan's mayor, Abdullah Hamoud, had to say. And it's actually dehumanizing to send campaign staff to ask us, what would it take to earn your support in November when you have an active genocide that's being funded and supported and defended by the current administration? 